happy new year and this is day two of my daily video uploads as I have been away from YouTube for a while. I want to bring in the new year with some daily videos as I look back on the year that's, that's passed and forward to the year to come. So today's video is unfortunately the worst books that I read in 2021. You know how it goes, not every, you know, you go into every single book expecting to enjoy it but sometimes you just come out of it going, that's a few hours of my life, I'm never going to get back. These are the books that in 2021 I felt that way. Now obviously this is not a hate on the authors or anything like that, this is my personal opinion. You know, if you enjoyed these books definitely let me know down in the comments and we can have a discussion about what you liked that perhaps I didn't like. It would be very interesting to hear from you. Without any further ado, here is the list of books that I perhaps didn't enjoy as much as the others. First one being A Sorcerer to the Crown by Zen Cho. I just really didn't gel with the writing style I think was my main problem. It tried too hard to be you know, especially with the dialogue, to be of the sort of Victorian England era and that just was too much for my tiny brain. As well as just the main characters were just kind of annoying, particularly the main girl character, Prunella. I just didn't find myself caring about her at all, which, you know, it was just unfortunately then just kind of impacted my enjoyment of the story as a whole. It just really dragged for me had a really really interesting idea but it didn't really develop that at all and it just kept bringing in more things that I just felt very convoluted. So yeah it was just the writing style and then just a lot of other things that just made this book feel like such a drag and yeah I think I gave it like two stars or something and that was being particularly generous. I then read The Left-Handed Booksellers of London by Garth Nix. I think I was really hoping to enjoy this one partly because of how cool that title is as well as how cool this cover is and again writing style particularly in concerns to the dialogue and, you know, I find our characters again to be quite irritating and especially Magnus, I found him to be really, really annoying. And, you know, just the way things progressed was just a bit weird and the pacing was just a bit strange. I just, I don't know, it was just a bit strange, you know, you didn't quite get as much as, as to like the booksellers and what they're all about as you perhaps wanted to. It was just very strange and I just didn't love it, which is what I was expecting to. I still kind of enjoyed it, but it was on the lower end of enjoyment and things, and yeah, I think I perhaps just hyped myself up too much because that's such a cool title and such a cool cover, and then unfortunately it just wasn't that great. The other book that I read was Kingdom of Souls. Again, just not as advertised would be my way to describe this. You know, it starts off in this one place with these one characters that you all get introduced to, and then very quickly you're away from that. So you know, you've got these sort of friends of hers, you've got this sort of small village and stuff, but then very quickly you go back to the city to these completely different set of characters and it's like, oh, I, want, I wanted to hear about them. And I don't know, I just, I found the main character very difficult to follow. Again, she just, I just didn't really care about her and her journey. And I did really like all the stuff with the kind of death magic and selling years of your life for magic. I did really enjoy that part of it, but the rest of it was just... I don't know, it just dragged on a lot and the plot was just a bit strange and the villains and stuff I didn't really care about and oh, I, don't, I don't even know, it was just a bit weird and I believe there's a plot twist at the end where, um, yeah, like who, like who our main character actually is, I, I, I just don't know, it just wasn't quite, it just came, came out of nowhere and I just really did enjoy it, which is such a shame because I was really really hoping I would because I'd heard lots of really great things about it but it just didn't didn't gel with me at all and it's not one I would recommend to other people. I then read Witch is Steeped in Gold and I really had hoped to see more of the sort of two witches versus each other but instead it was more these two witches and this one guy character who were clearly supposed to care about who I could not give less of a shit about and he, you know, he, he becomes a love interest for one of the characters, he becomes quite an important character later on in the book and I'm just like, I don't care about this guy, why are we giving him so much attention? And I did really enjoy one of the characters, Jasmine, she was the only reason I kept reading the book because the other character, whose name I can't remember, she again was just very irritating and just, oh, I didn't care about her motivations, I didn't care about her character journey, I didn't care about her love interest, she was just a very bland oh so special kind of character who doesn't think she's also special sort of thing versus then Jasmine who actually has a bit of a villain arc and was far more interesting but again didn't get quite as much screen time as I would have liked again has this really random love interest kind of shoved in there 
it had some really interesting ideas and the world building was amazing but I just didn't you know it's, it's supposed to be about these two witches making this deal that neither of them want to do but they feel they have to but again as I said you've got that one random guy character who basically just overshadows the whole thing and takes away from the dynamic we could have had between these two women and I think that was what really bothered me about it and yeah I just by the end of the book I just didn't care about our two protagonists versus our clear antagonist um yeah so not going to continue with that series it's one I didn't really, really did enjoy I also read The Gilded Ones by Winamina Forna. Oh my god, does the character in this have a case of special main character syndrome? Holy shit! Like, I've not seen a case of main character is the chosen one and is also special and everyone knows that she's also special. Since, like, peak YA dystopian back in, like, 2012, like, holy shit. I cannot believe that got published. It was just all the other characters served to basically show how this main character was also special and the special main character and then oh it was just it was just infuriating to read i'm not gonna you know back when i read it i was kind of a bit more lenient but now that i think about it it's just like holy shit that was bad and just i just have no words for how much that annoys me it was so bad and i didn't enjoy it and I'm going to talk talking about it now before it pisses me off even more. I then read The Ariadne by Jennifer Saint and I was so disappointed in this one. Because it, it promises to be a story about Ariadne and a story putting women from Greek myths at the forefront, particularly those that actually should have been the hero. You know, Theseus couldn't have done what he did without Ariadne, yet she's very much overshadowed in the story for being just a love interest for him and then later Dionysus. So I was really looking forward to a story that actually sees her take, take command of her life. And whilst it does, it's more of just a story about her life rather than anything, you know, propping up women and stuff. It follows Ariadne and it follows her sister Phaedra and it tries to say that it's a, a series about sisterhood or something, a book about sisterhood, but you know, these two sisters barely interact and when they do they're like being really petty and bitchy towards each other all the time, which you know, I have a sister. We're not always petty with each other, we are a lot of the time, but not in the way that Ariadne and Phaedra were. And one thing I say to people when they say, oh, why didn't you like it, is that it says it's going to be a story about women and uplifting women and putting their stories at the centre of the narrative, yet both female characters in this, their entire arc revolve around men and what another man is doing. And I think that just, you know, the point is there and she's missed it entirely. And yeah, I do have a spoiler-free review for this. If you do want to come and hear my thoughts about it, I'll definitely put it up in the cards. I think I, I say things a little bit more eloquently because it was right after I read it. You know, it has been a few months now since I read it, but yeah, I think that was my main issue was just that it promised to be one thing and it delivered on absolutely nothing. <laughs> this one's gonna be fun. Across the Nightingale Floor from Tales of the Autori. This is the worst book I've ever read in my life. I can not believe it got shortlisted for a Carnegie Medal. Um, it was just bad. It was just so bad. From the writing to the characterization to just the plot and just it very much felt like a white woman's interpretation of Japan and samurai and that sort of culture and yeah it was just bad it was just so bad speaking of bad the octonomy I DNF'd this it's some of the worst writing style I think I've ever seen in my life it's the most condescending book I've ever read in my entire life the narrator is just trying to be funny and they're not they keep beating a dead horse into a ground with the jokes which weren't funny to begin with like you know I read this one chapter which is you know these things keep happening to this one guy and you think that it's just gonna happen for that chapter to make the point and then it continues into like the next two chapters and you're like this wasn't funny the first time you did it why are we continuing with this yeah it was just it was so, it was amazing in the line as well because I'd heard like good things about it it looked really cool you had to order it from the special site and stuff which donates to charity and things which was cool and then it's quite possibly one of the worst things I've ever read after the Octon after Tales of the Autori, of course. Next one up, Dragon Round by Simon Power, I think his name is. A weird, weird book. A weird book. I picked it up in the library and I thought it was interesting, it had a really cool cover, it's about dragons, love me some dragons. And the first part is very much captain of a ship, takes down a dragon when his rest of his crew don't want to, so they exile him and the sort of healer who was on board who kind of stands up for him to an island. They then find a dragon egg, raise the dragon of their own as a way to sort of maybe get off the island and kind of have their little life there. A little bit of a will they won't be romance between the two. And then he, once the dragon's big enough, he flies off the island to go get help for her. And then 
actually kind of just ends up going out round and enacting vengeance on the, on the people that wronged him. It is another weird book, it is very weirdly structured, it is very weirdly written, it's basically almost, it's got those almost two acts to it where it's like one story then it flips and becomes something completely different and you follow all these other characters that you just don't care about. It was just very strange and I didn't enjoy it at all. And that's kind of all I'm really going to say about it because it was just weird. And last but not least, uh, Descendants of the First by Rennie K. Amayo, which I'm so sad to say. But it wasn't good. It wasn't good, fellas. So I first read Dawson's of Marie last year and I really enjoyed it. I went back and reread it earlier this year and it wasn't quite as good as I remember holding it up. It wasn't even the author's first book. It had some really good potential, it had some really good ideas. And then you get to the second book and it's just kind of like, this is the most boring thing I've ever read in my life. And the characters are very, very flat. Like, I cannot differentiate between the characters. We're supposed to have these sort of twin characters as our main kind of two. And I wish, I, I just wish there had been more of a journey with, of them kind of accepting the fact that they're sisters, because they're very much in denial of that fact, particularly one of them called Nala. And I don't know, it was just very weirdly structured again, weirdly paced. Like, the pacing was completely off, and I think that was what really threw me. And the writing as well concerning the action scenes, I found it, I found myself to be very disorientated in a fight scene. I had no idea who was where doing what and how they all related to one another. I couldn't picture the scene, I couldn't picture where they were. It was very, very difficult to keep up with what was going on and I think that also just contributed to just why I didn't enjoy it as much as I should have. The world building is fantastic, I will give them that. Like I absolutely love the world building of this series but the characters are just not there for me and I really need to have characters that I give a shit about so I won't be continuing with this series and I'm really really sad about that because I really really enjoyed Daughters of Marie the first time I read it but now that I kind of have my reviewer hat on and I've read a lot more books sadly it doesn't quite hold up. But that's it for me today, that's, those are the, you know, least slightly more worse books that I have read in the last year. Have you read any of these or did you think of them? Let me know down below in the comments, I'd love to hear from you. What are some of the what are some of your worst books from 2021? Let me know. I'd love to hear which ones I perhaps need to take a wee look at again. Uh, as I said, I'm going to be posting videos every single day this week, so stay tuned tomorrow for another video. And I'd definitely take a look at yesterday's video, which was the best books of um, 2021. So perhaps it's like a more positive video if this one was a bit too depressing for you. Um, definitely go feel free to have a look at any of the spoiler-free reviews I mentioned. And feel free to like, feel free to subscribe, as I will be back to posting two times a week once this video, once this week of daily videos is up. Um, and I will hopefully be able to keep up with that, so to, unless uh, university catches up with me again and gets really busy. But again, I will let you know if things do change. But thank you so much for watching. Happy Hogmanay. I will see you later.